Hello, my name's Dave Ford and this is Logan the Whippet and we're out once again on a walk in the New Forest. But today we're going to be doing something slightly different. We're going to be exploring what was once a World War II airfield known as RAF Bewley. Now we'll be doing a circular route the area is roughly two miles or so to the west of the village of Bewley itself. Now along the way, as well as it being a good dog walk for Logan, we'll be investigating and looking for artefacts of the old airfield itself, and maybe we might come across some aircraft, but not quite the type that you were expecting. More of that later. But do join us. Logan, are you ready? Are you ready? He's ready, let's go. Well, we're going to start our walk right in the middle of a whole load of brambles by the looks of things. We parked the car at the Hawk Hill Forestry Commission car park and most of our walk we'll be doing a, a route to the south of there to see the main airfield. But we thought we'd do a little detour north to start off with to see if we could find any of the remains of the bomb storage area. Obviously it was a good idea if they stored the bombs well away from the main part of the airfield. And sure enough, we found some evidence. Turn the camera around. We've got a little bit of, well it looks like an old brick wall. And this is where the, the bombs were stored. They were delivered by lorry and then fused here and their tail fins added. And uh, when they were needed, they would be put on trolleys and uh, wheeled out to the waiting aircraft. But somewhere along here, I thought, oh yes, there we are. I can just about see it in the, the distance. There's a bit more of a substantial bit of the wall. And this is the actual bomb loading ramp so a lorry would come along park alongside and they'd take the bombs off here and in fact if you look down you can just about see yes still got the old metal rings these are called i think they're called trammeling rings and so they would feed some rope through there and then feed the rope through round a bomb so that uh, it would be a little bit more stable when they were unloading but so it's just gradually becoming overgrown and then to the side here you can see an earthen bank which is man-made and again that was designed to add a little bit of protection in case there was an accident and the bomb went off it might protect the rest of the uh, the area and then all along through this this forest because this is a uh, the hawk hill enclosure which was planted in the 1870s as you go through it from time to time you'll come across this concrete track looking very modern uh, and that's obviously one of the tracks that the trolleys would have uh, been um, pulled along by little tractors but uh, gradually becoming overgrown as the years go by which is a shame so we're now going to head back to the car park and then head south and explore the airfield itself. crossed over the little road, I think it's the B3055 from memory, and we're now onto the site of where the airfield used to be. It's a beautiful day today, we're filming late September, but we're having a bit of a Indian summer at the moment, so the sun's out, it really is quite glorious. So let me pan round to show you, it's, it, obviously it's all open heathland now, and some ponies happily grazing away there.
So let me tell you a little bit about the, the history of the airfield. There was an airfield just on the other side of the road at East Boulder back in the early part of the 1900s. It was uh, the Air Flying Corps, uh, but that closed in 1919. At the outbreak of the Second World War, uh, the authorities were looking for a much larger area for an airfield and this site was, was chosen. They started building it in 1940 and it was opened in 1941. Now there are three runways, in fact if you look at an aerial map of the place you can still make out where they were. Uh, built at 60 degrees to each other uh, from different directions it looks like a giant A when you look on the map. Uh, the idea behind that is they could land and take off no matter what depending on whatever the prevailing wind was at the time. The main runway is 1800 meters and the two other runways are both 1200 meters. The whole area is surrounded by a giant perimeter track which will go on in a second. But, uh, there's nothing left of the actual runways now that was all um, ripped up some years ago but there are some little other bits of evidence so let's go and have a look. Well we're now on the perimeter track that obviously goes around the whole site and that's still here. Let's so pan round. And while you're looking down there I can consult my notes and tell you a little bit more about the history of the place. So it was September 1942 that the first lot of planes came here. That was 224 Squadron Coastal Command and their Consolidated Liberators arrived and those were used mainly for anti-submarine warfare. But in March 1944 the whole airfield uh, was made available to the United States 9th Air Force and their 365 fighter group and they had P-47 Thunderbolts and that's when it was known then as USAAF-408 but it was back in December 44 that the Airborne Forces Experimental Establishment moved in and they stayed for for six years and they were involved in work with glider towing and parachute drops actually using the old East Boulder airfield over the road as their dropping zone. In fact they also developed helicopters here as well but uh, eventually the site closed in 1959 and it was handed back to the Forestry Commission who now manage it on behalf of the Crown. Let's go and see if we can find some more evidence. We're now on the eastern side of the airfield and I've come across the site of where the control tower used to be, just behind me. Not all that's left now I'm afraid are the foundations. I did try and see if I could find a photograph of the, uh, the control tower on the internet but unfortunately not successful. We are a bit exposed out here, so apologies if the wind is uh, coming through on the audio. And just turning round here, I don't know whether you can see on the ground, there's a, a letter B and there's a letter L. It's not, it's difficult unless you look at it from a big height. But that is a code. Uh, it's almost like a a postcode really <laughs> which is used for the pilots when they were returning to make sure they were landing at the right airfield. Might sound a bit odd but during the war there were something like a dozen airfields in the New Forest so it was quite easy to land at the wrong one. Now there's something over here on my straight ahead I want to have a look at as well. Ah yes now I thought I saw something sticking out of the ground. This is just next to the control tower. And I'm pretty sure this is uh, a three inch sort of signal mortar firing system for flares, basically. But uh, I guess, what do you reckon? Yeah, but you put the flare in there, do you, Logs? I think so. Just a little bit of evidence still floating around. Okay, well let's get out of this wind. 
and get some protection. As well as the three runways and the 50 dispersal sites around the perimeter, there were two big hangars on the site, one in the north, one in the south. And I'm just by the foundations of the northern hangar. Let's turn around. You can see the, the concrete base on the left. And nowadays it's used, as you can see, as a storage area for composting bracken. <laughs> you do get a few sites like this on the forest. Um, you, you get a lot of bracken, obviously, uh, across the whole area. It can be a bit of a thug. Uh, when it grows, it creates this canopy that can be up to two meters high. And in the autumn, when it dies back, it just flops over and, and creates this sort of thatch on the ground that smothers all the other smaller plants. So from time to time, the Forestry Commission will cut back certain areas, harvest it as you were, and therefore grass can start growing again, which is good forage for the, uh, for the ponies. Uh, and so they'll cut it, store it at sites like this, let it rot down, and eventually it'll be probably sold onto garden centres as a soil improver, I guess. But uh, that's why all this is here, right in the middle of nowhere. And Logan's quite busily eating blackberries at my feet. Let's kick on. We're now about 200 yards to the east of the main airfield in the area that was where the accommodation huts and workshops were during the war. It's now just a campsite but just by me here is the uh, site of the water tower although looking at it I think it has been refurbished quite recently because that looks quite new at the top. But, uh, and then just panning, panning round, you can see it is now just a campsite. But I say during the war, this is quite a major operation here. There were something like 200 RAF officers, 1,500 other ranks, and about 400 members of the uh, Women's Auxiliary Air Force. So quite a, quite a major, major site. And you can see over there, there's a little hill. Let's go and investigate that. I thought we'd have a little look at this mound that I could see from the water tower. And it's actually a Bronze Age burial mound. I'm pleased to see that it's been fenced off to protect it. But uh, in fact, there was quite a bit of controversy way back when the airfield was built and that there were a number of similar mounds such as these all over the heath and they were destroyed or leveled to make a flat surface for the uh, airfield. I'm glad to see this one has been preserved. Right, now we're going to head off into some woods to see if we can find some uh, old air raid shelters and after that possibly even some aircraft if we're lucky. We were just walking up the side of the wooded area with the old airfield on our left hand side and we've come across a couple of the old um, air raid shelters. So let's have a look. They look in quite good, quite good condition. Look at those. Oh, looks like there's an entrance. I might need the old, yeah, I thought I might need the spotlight in here. Ooh, what have we got in here? So brick on the outside and some bolts and what have you. What it's constructed of. Uh, definitely some concrete base. Uh, good. 
80 years old. Let's get out into the sunshine again. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Wow. How about that? Well, we're on the eastern side of the uh, airfield now, and we've come across a, a lovely little model aeroplane runway, I suppose you'd call it. And uh, just coming across this chap. Hello. I didn't ask your name. Yeah, good afternoon, David. <laughs> David, David. Yeah. Tell me about these um, wonderful aircraft. It's... Yeah, all lovely models. Yeah. And, uh, some are IC, some are jets. And, all uh, right. So have a look at this one here. Yeah, that's the Grumman Hellcat. A what? Uh, sorry? A Grumman Hellcat. A Grumman Hellcat. Amer uh, yeah, American fighter. Yeah. Yeah, and around here we have the uh, Pitt Special, going back into the 40s and 50s. Oh uh, gosh, yeah. An aerobatic model. Yeah. Uh, so this is Bewley Airfield. Yeah. And what sort of speed will these get up to? Well, well these go around about 70 miles an hour top speed. 70 miles an hour, yeah. Lovely. And wonderful because it's got such a history with the place as well. Yeah. Uh, I thought that looked like a Spitfire. Hello there. Hi. Is it okay if I film oh, your little boat? You've had a bit of an accident. Just a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Is that quite common? Hmm. Mm. Yeah. It happens. Oh. Have you come to a conclusion yet? Yeah. Do you know what? I think I moved that battery back too much. Too, too much. much. And it That's went what really pale heavy, and it went, yeah. I couldn't control it. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Everything I, do, I just give it a little bit of up or down. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know. Are they easy to control or? No. There's not uh, really, no. No. <laughs> there are planes and there are not planes. set up. Yeah. Don't out. Yeah. If you've got a nice beginner plane. Yeah. Then yeah, they're a lot easier to control than something like. And this. is this the right? I mean, it's, there's a bit of wind about today, isn't not there? Too bad, not too bad. Wind, yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. That's a hundred nice, pounds yeah. down the drain, eh? Oh no! Sorry about that, Derek. <laughs> no, not your fault, mate. No, no problem. No, no. Oh. Cool, but yeah. I've had it happen with these batteries, yeah. and I mean, I think it's repairable. Yeah. I don't think it's too bad. Well, once you've stripped oh, it down, I don't know. Closer look, you, you yeah. can't repair it. Yeah, I think I'm going to prepare to get the old yeah. boiling yeah. water. Well, right thanks for letting me have a look, guys. Right. <laughs> Cheers. Nice to meet you. Not All right. Local paper, don't put my name in it. No. <laughs> Yeah. Google, YouTube. YouTube. Come on, come on. Oh, lovely. Well, we hope you enjoyed our little trip around the uh, area. Not our normal type of walk in the New Forest, but uh, a pleasant dog walk nonetheless. If you did enjoy it, please like, comment and subscribe. And do check out some of our previous videos in the New Forest. Hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. In the meantime, Thanks for watching and cheerio. Now, where's the nearest pub? Three miles away? Oh.